When meet asking, somebody, Jay? He was asking us where where you should go. Yeah, so um, I was telling Dutch earlier. Um, you gonna start the show off calling him by wrong? Like I was shivering, my bad, Dutch. The nigga disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Anyways, so I started I started opening myself up musically um, to a lot of artists that I felt like I cut off or didn't give like a a chance really. So I said, in that nature. It was like early Gambino, uh, Drake Post, Nothing Was The Same, most of Jay-Z because I've heard a lot of his singles, a lot of the songs. I've heard enough to know the albums, but I don't. I didn't listen to them. Like, I didn't give them, like, fair shakes, so to speak. So, <laughs> uh, like, a lot of cuts that I, I, I'm just start going through artists and just going through their catalogs and just seeing how it goes. So, I hit up Tech File yesterday, and I said, hey, if I was to listen to any Jay-Z album, <clears throat> what is the very first one I should listen to? And Eric said, that's a good pre-show question. <laughs> <laughs> and my first question to you would be, um, what are your top three Jay-Z songs? I need to know what kind of Jay-Z you like. I keep saying this, but I feel like Change Clothes might be number one. <laughs> that's my shit, man. The mayor so also like the really likes <laughs> like that's he my like shit. The, no, he that, like the smooth I laugh because like that makes total Doesn't sense, it? <laughs> like, do doesn't it? Um, like the smooth. Okay, what's the name? Uh, same song. I'm back. Been around the world. Hope man, some girls that dance that's with girls. girls from Club okay. Cheetah to Club Ab. My hustler, baby. Just want to give it to you. And want you to know. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's what shit. Now we, we went back but to give young. it to me. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, hell no. oh, damn. R.I.P. Pop. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video. Coordinating. Uh, number three. What is. Mm. I honestly I couldn't even get you. So just, three. okay, we got two. Yeah, um, those two. For sure, for sure. Blueprint would be a, probably a great place for you to start. Well, I started at Black Album. That's, That's a good one, too. I feel like that. Yeah. Like, he kind of likes the more polished sound, like the more mm-hmm. refined. Like, well, just want to g- give it to me is is earlier. Jeff. I know, but I mean, mm-hmm. I'm saying like in the vein of like he he seems to like the more like. Oh, what's the name? Call it Foxy Brown song. You know, I like, number three. Him, uh, yeah, ain't no nigga. No, 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 no. You thinking of the one with the meal? I'll be good. That's oh, right. We drop hits to so tell me how right. nasty can you? Yeah, that's my other one. That's her album song. Yeah. Is that her song? Mm-hmm. I must say, I thought that was his shit. <laughs> that's, that's like not on any of his albums. So I was trying to place on the album, like it's not on any mm-hmm. album. But I said either Blueprint or Black Album. Okay. Yeah. I would start with Black Album. Yeah, and you too. started at Black Album. Yeah. But actually, now that I thought about it more, I would have actually told you to start on Blueprint. I'll fuck with the Black Album, though. <laughs> Black Album 5. You say you don't? I do. No. Mm-hmm. December 4th, and then it went to Encore, it turned into Change Clothes, and I was like, oh shit! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I would have had Blueprint go first. If I would have known how much you enjoy Change Clothes, I would have had you not start with the album that has your favorite song. On it. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I forgot how much I enjoyed it because that was my song that I listened to before we hooped at Dominican. But like for for music, like because I've had the same thing, like trying to get into like Prince or. Really? <laughs> <laughs> At one point, I never did, yeah, but I was no. like trying to get into the Beatles too, and it's just like I could. I Beatles. wonder how much I of like music is just like hitting you at the right time. It's like, a lot because yeah. music, like uh, for, for me at least, like music, like it brings up like where I was at when I first heard it. Yeah. Right. So it's like trying to go back and <clears throat> have that moment, like as a thirty-year-old, would be different than as a twenty-year-old when it came out. Right? Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like I want. I'm wondering if, like, as an adult, like, you need to do like the more contemporary stuff because, like, that's more in line with where you are right in now. life, and would, then go back and listen, like, once you have an appreciation for the artist. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I, th- I thought I heard thought you say something different. Which is probably why I'm in the Prince now. Certain than I artists. Been when I was a kid, because a kid it was Mike. You can't understand Prince when you're a child, right? You can hear the melody and enjoy what mm-hmm. you're hearing, but you don't understand them yet like the artist that i recently was doing was nipsey hustle i was spending a week on each nipsey album because i never listened to yeah. a full nipsey album mm-hmm. a week with each album and i was like this nigga be spitting like <laughs> like this was the time of the life where i started that which was around thanksgiving and y'all remember everything that was happening then like it was the time that i needed to listen to that and actually more recently to pimp a butterfly not as bad as i first said mm-hmm. it hits differently now than it did when it came out 
That's fair. And that's why I'm going down this little musical journey now. Shout out to my musical, my music buddies who we uh <clears throat> we do that with. We got to get these, what's the name, battles back too, dog. These music battles, dog. Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> It's your boy, T-I-M-K-I-N-Z, the number three, a.k.a. Ass Catch'em, a.k.a. Mr. Give It To Me. I am the Eric J. Only known as. The Eric J. And I'm Camille, point guard of the crew of the real life Tifa Lockhart. Tim nigga today. Hey. Uh, <laughs> you know, holding it down for all the women who love sports. And it's your boy, K. Harris, the gentleman. The gentleman. The everyday gentleman. 24-7? But better known as KDD. Take that, take that. You know, Sam said that give it to me rang off, too. She was like, I like, no, I know oh, that yeah, shit sounded good. She texted me. She was like, was that you? I mean, that was me. <laughs> that motherfucking hit. Uh, I'm like, saying. That was me. Anyways, you can find us at www.technicalfile.com. Don't forget to put the K on that motherfucker. Damn right. You can also find us at Instagram, Technical File, Twitter, Technical File. Facebook, you can go to our Facebook page, Technical File Podcast. You can also join our Technical File Pod Overtime Group. When you listen in with the join, <laughs> I was going to listen in close. with the joiners <laughs> and the. <laughs> you were close. That's why I tried to stop a couple of times. I was just like, trying I was, to see where he's going. I, like, well, yeah. I don't know. He almost had it perfect. He did almost. He was getting your shit off. He was. He was. It off. was beautiful. Anyways, join in with the listeners, fans, and the fam. <laughs> he was getting this shit off. <laughs> Um, like I say every week, man, um, if you guys enjoy being a part of this amazing Technical File fam, um, share with everybody you know, man. Your coworkers, your your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your cousin, everybody. Chickens, cats, babies. Everybody, <laughs> god damn it. If they got an ear and they can hear. <laughs> Fresh. Bars. Exactly. Y'all, we talking about Jay-Z, I got bars too, nigga. Let's go. Um, yeah, man, make sure you. Um, and they can hear. <laughs> That's the title right there. We out there. I'm for the copyright that shit. We get, we for the eat. <laughs> but um off ear. <laughs> Tyson. I'm like this nigga got fingers off ears and shit. <laughs> but um yeah, share with everybody, man. If you guys enjoy it. Um this is what I want y'all to do this week. Um since we've talked about music and all of that, mm. put us on to something that you listening to or a song that you think, you know, we need to get put on to. So screenshot it and then screenshot you um listen to Tech File. So put us on, put us on to some new music when you listen to it, though. Yeah, and I will enjoy coming back <coughs> next week and, and talking about some of the music. I, I would love to hear some new stuff. Yeah. Hey, speaking of which, shout out to Quincy from uh, 7210 Pop. Mm-hmm. He put me on the Masego that one time that they was on the show talking about him. And ever since then, he became one of my favorite artists. I swear to God. The mayor is listening right now, and he's going to be upset because he swears he put you on Masego. Does he? Yeah. Because the first time I wanted to listen to something <laughs> was uh, when he I was ain't listening real. to No, I was listening to 72 and 10. Quincy played uh, the one with Sir, mm-hmm. Old Lady. And I was like, oh, that sounds decent enough. And I went back and I saw, and I went to that song, and I was like, the next song I think was Tadal. And I was like, why he play this shit? And That's you know what, what I remember. But if Mary did, I my bad, bro. May not have been paying attention at that time. Not important. <laughs> Wherever you find podcasts, you can find us. That includes <laughs> Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. Google Podcasts, yep. Spotify, we yep. too. Stitcher, mm-hmm. SoundCloud, yeah, iHeartRadio, Hushka, Hushka, Himalaya, like a player. and wherever you listen to podcast, wherever you're listening to this podcast right now. While there, make sure that you like, subscribe, rate, and review. Five stars are better. It helps us, and we appreciate it. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. It was actually kind of cool uh, dropping the Rumble Pop with no pub. Because I saw, like, we can see, like, how many people actually, like, subscribe. Because they're like, oh, like, I'm going to take five. Like, mm-hmm. and it was about wrestling. I was actually surprised how many of y'all listened <laughs> to that. <laughs> but, uh, they like the wrestling. I'm going to be trying it. to keep bringing the wrestling, dog. It's somebody who likes it's the wrestling that out there. It's the the subset. They like the wrestling, I guess. Speaking of wrestling. I saw a tweet from uh, Black and Now Stable, I think, and they were saying like next year WrestleMania, we'll get to it. Next year WrestleMania will be in LA, and we need to get a Black Wrestling Podcast, oh yeah, I seen Rock that. Nation brunch oh, yeah. type thing mm-hmm. going. 
that's my that's on my vision board now. Like okay. for the next year. Like we we will be there. <laughs> so WrestleMania thirty seven LA? Mm. Mm. I ain't been to no WrestleMania ever. Me one. either. But I can see it. That's gonna be an expensive one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> LA, LA WrestleMania, Inglewood. No, they they in uh, at the so what's the Sophie? Yeah, that's in Inglewood. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's why Inglewood is getting gentrified because they put mm-hmm. in a big ass stadium there. Yeah, they got some mm-hmm. nice Airbnbs in Inglewood now too. Mm-hmm. You know what? We off Y'all track. Stay in the dunes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to stay on the beach. I'll I'll take my Uber into the city. Put your toes in the sand. The sand be cold. <laughs> anyway, I ain't driving nowhere and. In- Los Angeles. No, I Uber the whole way. Um, Speaking of LA, we got some NBA trades. I haven't even uh, said nothing. Some, said nothing a little too new. quick on the drama, yeah. guy. It's going to be the top 10 cities <laughs> from the past week before oh. we got into the show. Quick drama growl. Quick hey, drama. listen, I was just trying to you know, fill in the gaps. Quick drama He was so excited. That's what she said. Number oh. one was Milwaukee. Shout out to the home city. Milton. Two was Copra's Cove. What did that do? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that tech, that's tech, of, it's outside, Texas, ain't it? Yeah, outside of oh, okay. Shout out. Minneapolis was three. Mm-hmm. Michelle? Actually, tied at three. Minneapolis <laughs> and Chicago. Okay, shout out. Chicago! Then you got Chica- or Orlando at five. Mm-hmm. Miami at six. Okay, Miami. Useless. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that. I'm sorry, probably not saying it. U- E-U-L-E-S-S. What city is that? That does look like useless. <laughs> Damn, what the fuck? I don't know where useless That's is. Kind of sad. Oh what? Depressing ass motherfucker. Where are you from? I'm useless. <laughs> yeah, the damn. useless native. Oh my god, damn. Damn, dog. Then we got a new Berlin. That's also Texas. Is it? Mm-hmm. All right, Texas. Show a mad love. I see y'all. Dallas, Fort Worth. Mm. Oh, okay. Then y'all we, y'all we not gotta... useless? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> the useful to us. <laughs> there you go, god damn it. <laughs> then we got uh, New Berlin, uh, which is in Wisconsin, Arlington, Texas, and Rockford, Illinois, and Honolulu, all tied for the last. Who the fuck is Hawaii? So, yeah, you know, the states, you know, we got some love from all over. We lost France, though. I don't know about inter- oh, Zoot. Got to bring Pierre back, B. <laughs> That's why we lost him. <laughs> hey, Pierre ain't been here in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, in the last week. Our our international listeners were from Spain, Vietnam, and Sweden. Okay. Okay. I think I left a sticker in Spain. Hey. Actually, no. My brother was in Spain. Never mind. Did he leave a sticker? I don't know. Oh, okay. I just know he was there, so maybe he listened. <laughs> Your family be traveling, traveling. Y'all are family of Tommy's, dog. Bro. Let's get into this show. Let's start they talking work for about. Shield, bro. Man, I'm telling the whole family. Nick Fury cousins. And shit. <laughs> NBA trade deadline. We starting there. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so the Timberwolves, Timberwolves finally got they got. They got no, they D'Angelo. Was thirsty. They was a thirsty B. <laughs> they got D'Lo, Amari Spellman, on, and just, Jacob Evans. <laughs> let me just get D'Lo up off you. <laughs> While the Warriors got Andrew That's... Wiggins, <laughs> the Timberwolves 2021 first round pick, top three protected, and the Timberwolves 2021 second round pick. Hmm. <clears throat> I like the trade. It makes sense. In, the, sen- in the sense of uh, <clears throat> it made both teams like both teams want it. Mm-hmm. I like Wiggins over there in Golden State they need for a what, wing. what they can be. Because you get Wiggins, you get Steph, you get Clay, you it's get ugly contract, Draymond. But... I'm like, yeah, but Wiggins is he can score. He can he can put the ball in the hoop. You put Steph and Clay out there with him. He's the slasher. <laughs> like and then Draymond can play the high post. He can shoot a little bit. He can pass mm-hmm. a hell of a bit. I said a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of bit. Not a lot of bit. Just enough of it. <laughs> Just a Not even close Shooting like he got a backpack on. Mm-hmm. I hate but his like, jumper. My, his, mm, my overall reaction to the trade deadline is like a lot of these moves make sense for what the teams receiving stuff need or exactly. like what their what their priorities are, save for the next trade that we'll get to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't know, like, these are the two biggest names that got traded on the deadline, but I don't think either one really moves the needle. 
that's a better way of saying it because I was going to say neither one of them really matters. Um, but I think that for Minnesota, if it's to keep Carl Anthony Towns happy, then it's right. worth it. It's kind of like it Giannis with his brother on the team. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, Giannis is worth two roster spots. Yep. Like that's fine. Like whatever it takes <laughs> to keep him on the team forever, for, mm-hmm. as long exactly. as you keep Giannis. Like, shit, you can bring in another two for all I care. Um, <laughs> right. mm, four is that's a lot. Hey, who want Giannis? Yeah. Okay. Team for Giannis. It's like like before this, like Carl Anthony Towns was like the saddest person in the NBA. Um, yeah. Like yeah. he. Like, you could tell, like, watching the games, like, he just didn't want to be there. He's kind of going through the motions. Like, his defense was terrible. Now he got his best friend. Right. So, like, at least, like, he's happy. And I think even a quote came out after the trade deadline where he's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm much more likely to want to stay here now because... My guy here. Exactly. So, I mean, like, it, ex- it explains, like, why they were so thirsty to get him. Like, if he's <laughs> like, get me D-Lo, then, like, they got him. get D-Lo. Mm-hmm. And, like, honestly, like, the price wasn't that high, to be honest. Like, I feel like you would have had to attach a first-round pick to get rid of Wiggins by Regardless. himself. I yeah. mean, look at what the Warriors were able to do. They did a sign and trade to get D'Lo when they were going to lose Kevin Durant for nothing. They've been able to flip it for assets. Mm-hmm. Which we knew they was going to do in the first place. And they said, no, no, like, no, we you... They had to say that. Yeah. <laughs> we all knew. Steve Kerr, when they traded him, he was like, we all knew it wouldn't work. Like, <laughs> dang, nigga, you had to say it like that. <laughs> I mean, like, if you look at, like, what they actually gave up, in all of this, like they had to give, like they had to get rid of Iguodala, which they had to attach yeah. a first round pick to, um, and they also gave up a first round pick to Brooklyn, like to to get. I don't know, like the, <laughs> it, the pick <laughs> exchanged that way. Yeah. Um. So like they gave up two first round picks, which granted, like they're Warriors first round picks, so theoretically they should be back Long. half of the lottery, mm-hmm. and lot, back half of the first round, whereas. Timberwolves pick will probably be a lottery pick, mm-hmm. but like they still gave up all like Iguodala, two first round picks for mm-hmm. Wiggins and a first round pick. Like mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know, like maybe it's a wash in the end, but like they might have been better off just like letting KD walk and <clears throat> keeping their first, keeping their picks and Iguodala. So mm-hmm. who, so who has Golden State's pick for this coming draft? This year they get to keep it because it's, it was five. like top twenty protected, and, and because keep. they suck, like they I think it's it rolls over. I don't know what it rolls over into. Okay, but yeah, they'll they'll be a top five pick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like if they if they would have stayed healthy, like they, beyond Clay, like they might have. And that's what I was it. saying too. Like they could pick Wiseman for that no, that top pick if they keep it, and now you got your five. Yeah, maybe if he works out. If he works mm-hmm. out, and like the other smart thing about like Wiggins is like he's a, he has a big salary, so like if they mm-hmm. are in the running for a star going forward, like they have the matching salary already, and they can attach this year's pick plus that Minnesota pick, then right there you already have, like, a pretty good trade package. Like, for example, if Bradley Bill becomes available, like, two top ten picks plus Wiggins, like, you at least consider it, you know? Like, so. Definitely. Which brings me back to the Warriors did good. I mean, it wasn't a bad trade for them. And it wasn't bad for the Minnesota if it's to keep their stuff. But now, what do you think about what the Cavaliers and the Pistons did? uh, Because the Pistons traded uh, Andre Drummond. I was dying. uh, For a pack of Skittles. Uh, oh, Brandon Knight, John Henson. <laughs> Brandon Knight is part of the trade package. And either <laughs> the Cavaliers or the Warriors, 2023 20, second round pick, whichever is least favorable. So look at it this way. 40% of the starting five for a 15-win Bucks team got traded for Andre Drummond. Yeah. And now that you're running with the whole bench over there in Detroit. The Detroit Bucks. <laughs> like, no. Don Maker. Yeah. Christian Wood. Yeah. Tony Snell. Tony Snell. Yeah. John Henson. Yeah. Brandon Knight. Yeah. <laughs> That's a starting five right there. They had Tim Frazier, but they waved him. Mm. But that was six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it might be somebody else on the bench. They could have got Della Dover, too. It would have been just a rock. <laughs> <Ground it all. laughs> I don't, like, I, I see you, Detroit. You see the Bucks are doing good, and you like, you know what? Let's get some Bucks here. Like, that's how they started. They started with these cats. Y'all Let's go ahead and start from there. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably wind up claiming uh, Dragon Bender. Right. Damn. Y'all got the wrong Bucks. Don't Except be for Christian Wood. Christian Wood might end up being something, but y'all might not keep him anyway. So, I mean. Mm. Y'all got Don Maker, though. Um, yeah. yeah. So, the Cavaliers got Andre Drummond. <laughs> Why? I, it's my question. Yeah, that was, yeah, I don't know why anybody <clears throat> did this. Oh, actually, I know why Detroit did yeah, this. They didn't want him to pick they up didn't that want, option. They don't want no He has a $29 million option mm. for next season. Damn. 
they don't want drumming no more. They're like, okay, you just ain't gonna work. I did, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but like, they give Kevin Love a little bit they, of help. They waited a year. They waited a year too late on drumming. Anyway, like not that, away. not that last. I was not that last year would have got them like yeah a star, but Brandon Knight and John Henson is what you get. That's what I said. I, I didn't even know they both in a second. I was like, that's one of them backwood trades you doing uh two K <laughs> just to kind of clear salary and shit. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Real life like, is two K. <laughs> like I, I like I get it from Detroit's perspective. Like they're like we get don't want your salary on the books right. for next year. We're trying to start over. And like it frees up playing time. Both Knight and Henson expiring yeah. contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Do they um, play? And we get I Henson, Henson might. does. Oh, okay. I Brandon Knight I don't think plays much at all anymore. Okay. Which wow. Yeah, he's yeah. still mm-hmm. pretty he's young. young. Like I would think, like twenty seven ish. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. I, yeah, because I saw his age and I was like, he feels like he should be like forty or something by now. Like he's been through a lot of. Things. I mean, honestly, Drummond is still only twenty six. He's twenty six. <laughs> yeah, how could have swear he's older than that? I swear. Like yeah, I yeah. thought he was. I thought he was at least thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. Nah, nigga, at least thirty. Right. right. <laughs> the Clippers beat out the Lakers. Man. For Marcus Morris in a three-team trade, Clippers ended up getting Marcus Morris and Isaiah Thomas. They 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 did wave it. <laughs> they cut him from the team. As Eric was like, isn't that a bit overkill? With it and Lou Williams, and then they cut him. Then they cut him. I was like, damn, Eric, <laughs> <laughs> putting these ideas out there. There was a video of it's like two three adults throwing a baby between each other. It's like y'all, y'all trading Isaiah Thomas. Like stop doing that to that man. And he was. I'll have to find it and post it for y'all. It was it was pretty funny. I didn't want to laugh, but I did. Uh, the Knicks got uh, Maurice Harkless, the Clippers' 2020 first-round pick, the Pistons' 2021 second-round pick, the right to swap their own 2021 first-round pick with the Clippers' 2021 first-round pick, which is top four protected, and then the draft rights to a man's name I cannot pronounce. He'll never come over, so it don't matter. Sa- In what Santa. world would... <laughs> The clip uh, in what world would the Knicks want to swap picks with the Clippers next season? Like, there's no way that they will, they'll be the worst. <laughs> thing. Like, like that doesn't even make sense. God, <sighs> fucking the Knicks. Oh, but, and the Wizards got Jerome Robinson. Forgot about that. It was a three team trade. Cats got to say the same thing about Golden State's pick last year. Wait, what? You know what? You're right. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he said you could have said the same thing about the Warriors pick last year. Like if they if you had swap rights on the, oh. their pick, like mm-hmm. everything could just go to hell, and the Clippers could be the worst team in I the league next year. Especially because they got Kawhi dragging himself and Paul often. George. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I can see the point. You're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they did that. Ken, how'd you feel about the Lakers not getting Morris? Um, I was upset. I feel like we could have. Try harder. I feel like they just they put it out there, but they didn't really like go for it. Go for it. Mm-hmm. They can't. Well, let's still try, <laughs> motherfucker. We can't just let you know. Clippers is, but I'm still I'm still confident. Like, like unless oh. unless it's Danny Green and uh, hey, man. Kyle Kuzma, like you, you can't match salaries and you don't have draft picks. So like, there's literally no package. Yeah, that the Lakers they could have bribed them. Hey, anything. I, I mean, something. try harder. <laughs> We got these keys, buggy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was kind of upset. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Can, it makes the Clippers even more scary. I was going to say, bro. do you feel like it moves the needle for the Clippers? It do. Like, and I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's in a, in a I don't know, seven-game series, though. Like, I don't want to see that shit. So, I, I wonder a lot if his numbers are a byproduct of just where he was. I'm or, thinking Or so. if he has, like, you know, taken another step. I mean, we've seen Marcus Morris as a bench piece mm-hmm. on a – He's, Relative he, contender. He's usable. He's useful, useful. but he, he's not he's not useless. <laughs> 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 uh, but like he he wasn't what he showed in New York. Like and he has a tendency to be kind of like ball hoggy. So for a team that already has like questionable chemistry, like <laughs> introducing that dynamic into the locker room is dicey. I'm sure Ken hopes you're right. I hope so, God damn it. <laughs> and like they didn't address their biggest need in my opinion. Like they need a, a big, big body or yeah. like a true point guard. Yeah. And they got neither. So mm. these are facts. I would feel okay if I was a Lakers. Yeah, I I'm think not, yeah, the Lakers, y'all was y'all was smart to just kinda relax. Chuck. Anything yeah. is and possible like it also makes too. sense. Yeah, it also makes sense for the Clippers. Like you basically upgraded the Harkless spot. Mm-hmm. Which is the worst thing in the world. 
The Heat got Andre Iguodala. Iggy. Jay Crowder. <laughs> Jay Crowder also be just getting thrown around. Dude, they just be moving Jay. <laughs> him and him and uh, what's that? Robert Covington. Yeah. Like that's the the danger of having like a good contract. Like yeah, to it was wreck a- these people for all they. Want. Yeah, for all your life, you just you just going around. Everybody wants you. A three team deal. Uh, the Heat got Iggy, Jay, and Solomon Hill. The Grizzlies got Justice Winslow, who Pat Riley was kind of like, dang, that one hurt. Dion Waiters and uh, Goral, dang, Gorgie. Really, it's Gorgie. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Waiters got Wade. I, not L. Definitely oh, like an L. L too. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, like, damn, that is. That's why I stopped. I was like. All right, but uh, yeah, wait a minute. Okay, uh, we damn Ken got glasses on too. I'm like, God damn, I was like, We got glasses, I'm like, damn, oh, yeah, I can't see shit if I had it. <laughs> uh, and uh, apparently, the Lakers are interested in waiters. I'll tell you why that makes sense in a minute, but continue. then the Timberwolves got uh, James Johnson. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll tell you now. Uh, <laughs> waiters ex uh, agent was Rob Palenka, and his new agent is Rich Paul. So. Oh, perfect. Oh, he's good definitely to be. gonna be there. Exactly, it's all good to me. God damn it! I mean, like honestly, it makes sense. Like he's he's somebody that can create his own shot. He can kind of shoot decently. Yeah, I'm not mad at that his at defense all. Defense is solid. Like, mm-hmm. which was what I was saying about. Didn't ball. he play with LeBron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. briefly. Yeah, in yeah. yeah, in Cleveland. Pass me the ball, yeah. LeBron. <laughs> like, no, Dion, no. Because <laughs> yeah, he went to Miami and took off. He had that great yeah. season, mm-hmm. and he kind of was kind of like had to get away and yeah. do his yeah. own thing. And then everything else went back to yeah, him. Start passing yeah. out from edibles. I don't say stay off the gummies. <laughs> Stay off the gummy. How we fly out of the water? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the heat got better. I like it. I don't think that it like changes their championship odds, but like they're in the same tier they were in before, but they're yeah, better. They're a good team. Yeah, they're, they're good. Yeah, I like. They're a really good team. They gotta stay healthy and. uh Get a favorable They're one of them teams that like, you kind of going into the playoffs, you're like, these young yeah, like, hey, they, bro, I don't want to fuck with them. Bam down there hooping, bro. Exactly. Bam, bam, bam down there hooping. So is Jimmy. Ooh, man. Give me your buckets. We got Jimmy and Jay in Miami. D-Wade's house. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. Hawks reacquire Dwayne Deadman. That was, I was like, okay. Hawks got Deadman, the Rockets 2020 second round pick, and the Heat's 2021 second round pick. The Kings got Jabari Parker and Alex Lynn. Jabari Parker has moved around a lot since he left the Bucks. Tossing Chicago, him. saving him. Chicago mm-hmm. to Washington, well, to Atlanta, yeah, and now to Sacramento. When did he leave the Bucks again? We were doing this podcast. Two years and he left the Bucks. Yeah, yeah. Damn, in two years, that's Four crazy. Four teams. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah. The Sixers. Uh, they, that was your boy too. Wasn't it? I love Jabari Parker. I hope the best for Jabari. We actually just passed like the. T- the anniversary of him tearing his ACL the second time. I was at that game. Hmm. That's when like, I, I won that. Saturday. It was because when I, I had my memory. Because when I met mm. Malcolm Brogdon, mm. it was the same night. Chris Middleton came back. Jabari got hurt. Mm. Mm. Then I met Malcolm and had free cousins. <laughs> I was I, I, I was actually talking to him on that day, and I'm like, that, like I feel bad for Jabari, but that was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because. They were on track to kind of max him out, and we would not have the team that we have now if we he was on the cap. So, mm-hmm. sorry for you. The Sixers uh, did some stuff. They got Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson the third. They got Little Dog. They waved <laughs> Trey Burke, Little Dog, Little Dog, <laughs> <laughs> and Jonah uh, Bolden. The Wire. I said the Wires. The Warriors got um, the Mavericks' twenty twenty second round pick, the Nuggets' twenty twenty one second round pick, and the Raptors' twenty twenty two second round pick. You needed to do something. Would have hoped you would have blown it up. But you want to rock to see how much longer this works. I think, actually, uh, Joel MB got booed tonight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see... Because uh, he was trolling. Him, I was you see him stirring the pot? You want to tell the people what he did? If you, Do you remember what he did? He, tweet, he, he posted, posted, he posted post- on IG, like, you live long the, enough the Batman to see quote. Your, yeah. You oh, yeah, live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Mm-hmm. And then Jimmy Butler replied... I know a place where villains can stay or something. Our like villains that. are welcome. Yeah. With the eyes. Shrug emoji. And then B replied. Then he gave the eyes too. He I, I think know. he just said damn right. Yeah, yeah something like that. They yeah. was flirting on the timeline essentially. And motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. was going ham. <laughs> it was going crazy. And then he t- he posted some follow up like All love. Yeah. 
Yeah, Philly, I love y'all. You know, I'm here to stay in Philly for love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so where where do y'all stand? Like, do I think Philly fans do like being over in B? I mean, before this, that wasn't the case, but like it. A lot of say you're, fans, say you're, oh, you're Elton Brand, and <laughs> okay. this season goes the way that this season is going. End of the year, y'all flame out first round. What you doing with this team? Mm. You got to trade one of them. Yeah. yeah. You have to. Do you have to trade one, or do you want to see if a different coach can unlock the two of them together? It would depend on team chemistry at this point because Joel Embiid has been saying a lot of little slide comments when they be asking him questions, and I feel like they'd be about Ben because he'd be mm-hmm. like, I'll be on the three-point line all the time. I wish I could not be on the three-point line, but, you know, I'm sacrificing for spacing for the team. And everybody know that you can just leave his ass <laughs> out there anyways. Which translates to that nigga Ben Simmons still can't shoot, so right. I got to be out here because I can shoot better threes than him when I should be in the paint. Which is why I don't think it is the coach. <laughs> if Ben can't shoot, it don't change shit. The issue isn't that he can't shoot, it's that he, he won't, won't shoot. Mm-hmm. It Same saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. At least if you're doing it, like, you're working on it, you're getting better. But, like, if you refuse you to even mean. try, like. Giannis take more threes in the game than he's taking all season. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. So, you guys are saying, like, not necessarily coach. No, Which I'll... one you getting rid of? I get the most value for Embiid. Mm, that's an interesting way to look at it. Not based on. And also, like, what plus Ben seems more player. like a team player for in Philly. He, I feel like he, uh, feel, at this point, Philly fans definitely like uh, Ben Simmons more. No, mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, as far as, like, he wants to be Philly. So does Joel. Mm-hmm. He's Mr. Philly. Actually, he loved being in Philly. He'd be walking in the streets. I'm not sure about that. why he flirting with Jimmy on in IG. I don't know. Yeah, I see, ain't, see, <laughs> see. I told you he ain't happy with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he and like al- Jimmy. <laughs> and also, like, you always got to factor in Embiid's injury stuff. So, like, if you trade Simmons, like, you have no backup. Like, say Embiid goes down, like, mm-hmm. at least now you have pause. No, I was just say Al Horford's your backup now. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, your centerpiece backup. I think it's old. Yes. Um, they gave him all He's that saying that he, because he never played power forward in his life. He That's why. definitely played power forward. I thought he did, too, but he's saying that he didn't. He's Maybe been not a in the NBA. He's been a center in the NBA. Who are you talking about? Al Horford. Al Horford. He really said that, huh? I mean, he he, he, he has played with I, Joe Kim Noah like in college, so he was right, definitely about like, Horford. But <laughs> niggas be lying. But I, in the NBA, I don't believe he's ever played power <laughs> forward. Possible. I mean, he insisted on playing power forward for the Celtics, just not like once he got down to crunch time, like he would be the center. But like they but always he was started like center most of the time. Who was big in Atlanta? It was him and who? Millsap. And Paul Millsap. Paul yeah. Millsap. He was a center in Atlanta. I just can remember who the duo. They was, mm-hmm. I remember they had a front court duo, and I was like, God, they got some, like. Mm-hmm. Like, Millsap. he's always been a center for the most part. So, yeah. I was like, I can see it, but. I mean, at this point, like, he can't guard four, so he's a center. Yeah. yeah. And that's why he's like, I'm t- I'm playing bad. <laughs> <laughs> the Rockets flipped Jordan Bell to Memphis. The Rockets got uh, Bruno. Caboclo. Who Giannis is going to dunk on in March? Uh, the Grizzlies got Jordan Bell. Him. The right to swap the Mavericks or the Heat's 2023 second round pick, whichever is less favorable, uh, with the Rockets' 2023 second round pick, top 32 protected. The Rockets uh, went on in on went all in on small ball. Duh. I six six watching. and under. I kind of it's kind of fun to watch. Wait, we got touch rates. Huh? No, I don't think we have that on here, do we? Oh, no, it's on the second page. Oh, all right. I'll come back to that then. Uh, Magic got James Ennis. Y'all don't care about that. Yeah, that shit don't matter. The Nuggets, uh, y'all yeah, don't care don't about matter. that. <laughs> the Trailblazers. Yeah, that shit don't matter. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm saying it's Jordan McRae, Shabazz Napier, Scout Labissier. You care about any of that? You got any thoughts? <laughs> nah. Nah, I'm not even going to lie to you. Derek Walton Jr., that shit don't matter. <laughs> okay, now we get to the good shit. All right, uh, <laughs> Rockets, Hawks, Timberwolves. They gonna be listening to me. shit. Like them niggas just skip past my. <laughs> hey man, y'all, y'all getting NBA paychecks? I, y'all don't need to worry about What about my about team, me. bro? <laughs> my bad, bro. No, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, Rockets, Hawks, Timberwolves, and Nuggets completed a massive twelve-player deal. The Rockets acquired Robert Covington, Jordan Bell, who they flipped, um, and a t- second-round pick. Hawks got Clint, Clint Capella and Nene. 
God, the that's, that's a tongue twister. Um, Timberwolves got Malik Bees knee. Bees, jeez, bees, the bees, <laughs> bees knees. knees. The, the bees, 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 bees knees. The bees, bees, bees. <laughs> Malik Beasley. <laughs> <laughs> the bees knees. <laughs> why is that's that a even a saying? <laughs> like, what does that? What does that mean? He's the bees knees. Like, why do they? Why, do, why is that a compliment? Like, you're the bees knees. Because <laughs> you're the business. You're the bees knees. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep reading. I'm gonna look up bees knees. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> spell it like business. See what you find. No, it's not. What I'm looking up. <laughs> this is it's not the same thing. <laughs> God, Timberwolves got Malik Beasley, Juan Juancho, uh, Hernan Gomez, Evan Turner, who they're gonna wave, Jared Vanderbilt, and a first round pick. Uh, the Nets 2020 first round pick that goes to the Timberwolves <clears throat> will again be top 14 protected in 2021 if it is not conveyed in 2020, which probably will not be. <laughs> um, and the Nuggets got Gerald Green, who I think they're waving, Kata, B- Kata Bates Jop, Shabazz Napier, who they flipped, uh, Noah Von Ley, and uh, first from the Rockets. So, like you said, they're going all in on small ball in Houston. I think. <clears throat> When you refer to something as the bee's knees, yeah. bee's knees, the bee's knees, bee's mm-hmm. knees, it means that it is of excellent or very high quality. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sentence, you would say, the technical file is the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to get that shit on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Tech file is the bee's knees. <laughs> the origin of the expression is Damn largely God. unknown. Although there are a number of theories. Some people believe that it is a reference to the fact that bees carry pollen and sex on their knees. That the expression the therefore alludes. <laughs> bees got knees? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> that shit ran. The bees knees. Oh, bees got knees. Bees knees. <laughs> and they keep the pollen under they, in their knee. You're the bees knees, guy. So that's like the concentrated goodness. So the bees knees. There you go. The bees knees. <laughs> That shit's like, stupid I was, as fuck. My son listens to like nursery rhymes and shit, and like a, a lot of them, like they must have been like high as hell when Dog. they came up with them songs. Like the uh, the the cat, the fork ran away with the spoon or whatever. That that oh, one, cow I'm jumped like, over the moon. Yeah, I'm like, like actually listening to the lyrics. I'm like, this is like a fever <laughs> dream or some shit. Like, <laughs> like why are they doing all that? But yeah, uh, small ball. Yes, I don't. I don't know. Like, people... The jokes are funny. They are. Like, uh, PJ Tucker on stilts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's actually really fun to watch because their personnel is, like, up to being little guys on the court. Mm -hmm. When your point guard is Russell Westbrook, who's just... Like, he's essentially your center. Like, he's on the... Because he's going to go get the bullets. Yeah. And, like, the the way they was put to me is, like, Essentially, when it gets to crunch time in the playoffs, they're going small anyway. So you might as well optimize your roster to play that way. Mm-hmm. And like now, they can really go five, well, four out technically plus Russ. Um, but Russ got all that space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's no center there to stop mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Nope. You park Tucker in one corner and Cap- uh, Capella, um, Covington. Covington in the other one. Then you got Gordon, Russ, and Harden, and Harden. with hella on the space. Wings. Yeah. <laughs> And like they're fast, and they can like everybody pretty much can play up. Like it makes it makes sense. Um, but if you would have watched like the first game against the Lakers, every other sentence out of Chris Webber's mouth was, "See, that's why you need a big on the court because yada yada yada." And it's like, okay, but the Lakers are losing right now. Like, what are you? What yeah, are you that's the surprising thing. I was kind of watching that game. I was like, oh, yeah, I was shocked. Y'all kind of losing right now. They did lose. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't watch. The, I didn't finish watching the game, but I was just like, "This is kind of interesting." Okay, I was shocked. I was like, just keep like it's, it was funny because they was like, you saw they wanted to just keep giving the ball to Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. but like they Anthony Davis was kind of like, "Oh, like we just force it all. We just like forcing it, forcing it." Mm-hmm. And, and that's the other thing. Like you force teams to kind of get out of what they naturally want exactly. to do because they're trying to exploit they had no mismatches. rhythm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. they didn't play their game. They just kept trying to get the ball to Anthony Davis, and it, it didn't. Um, Who the hell idea was this? To what? The small ball. This small ball to like just get rid of all your big niggas on your team. They kind of <laughs> fell into it. Yeah, because like Capella got hurt and they and they had to do what they had to do. Yeah, and it was and working. Like, oh, this shit worked. So but why not go all in? Mm. Uh, Memphis agreed. 
Wait, sorry. Just one last thing. Like, I like Beasley, Beasley, and uh, <laughs> Hernan Gomez. Hernan Gomez for I love Minnesota. Gomez. Like, and they've been playing amazing. Like yeah. with their new team, like they swapped out more than half their roster at the trade deadline. <laughs> like they had like the introductory press conference. Mm-hmm. They had like seven dudes on stage. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Plus Evan Turner, who was who they waived, but also acquired. You know, like it's just right. I don't know. Like they they they've been fun to watch. Like they can't defend worth shit, but they score a lot of points, shoot a lot of threes. That was a quick uh, retool for them too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see if it works out. Uh, Memphis agreed to a three year, thirty five million dollar extension with Dylan Brooks. That's solid. Milwaukee waived Dragon Bender as we said earlier to sign Marvin Williams. Uh, he was bought out by the Charlotte Hornets on Saturday. Charlotte also bought out uh, Michael Kell Gilchrist, and he's expected to go to Dallas. I think he actually did sign in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like the pickup from Milwaukee. Makes sense. If you can upgrade Dragon Bender to someone who could actually play in the playoffs, you should do that. A mini blow the whistle on anybody who thought they were going to wave DJ Wilson or Sterling Brown. Or instead. the Nasses. I was like, y'all are really crazy. Y'all are going to wave Giannis' <laughs> brother. the new Bucks fans. You're going to wave Giannis' brother on the same day that his son is born? <laughs> is it the new Bucks fans? Like y'all just be out here saying shit. No, bro, chill. Just, just, just her. Shout out to I know. Like Dragon Bender bro. was basically signed so that he could get yeah, waived bro, for like, a buyout. He was getting these minutes to show a little bit of value to see if we could go he ahead and get a, rid of him. He was a little flyer, like maybe. Right, like hey, yeah. throw him out there real quick. We got a couple good duds. Go ahead, and see if what not, you got. You're no, you're not guaranteed. I mean, it's so. cool. Yeah. Right, they're like, nah, we good. I'm like, all right, he gotta go. <laughs> and from everything I've heard about Marvin Williams, who also great name Marvin Gay Williams, like he was actually named after well, Marvin. His dad was named after Marvin Gay. Like that's pretty tight. Um, he's a great locker room guy, which is very important with the Bucks culture. Like it's a mm-hmm. close locker room, so that was the first. I'm like, don't mess up this chemistry. <laughs> Not that I thought that you know Dragon Bender was like a key component of mm-hmm. it, but you never know. Sometimes you like you, if they would have brought in like Deion Waiters, and I'm like, you know what I mean? Like you like, Ugh. so he, he's a good <laughs> vet. Was was cool. He can shoot the three. He'll def- he's not as good a defender as he used to be, but like still better than Ursa yeah. in in certain aspects, more yeah. athletic. Yes, he can get to a spot a little bit quicker. Better lateral quickness. So, yeah, I mean, I like it. Phoenix Wave, Tyler Johnson, and then free agent guard Darren Colson. He decided to stay retired after both the Lakers. Fuck you come to game for. And Clippers. Get everybody excited and shit. Courted him. Y'all was courting him. He got the game. He Court side of the game. We're like, oh, we all here. We for the feed him. <laughs> you know, we for the wine and dine him real quick. He be like, man, come down, lady. Speaking of flirting, like, uh, Jeannie Buss had her flirting oh, yeah. eyes on. Like, they were, yeah. What, 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 what there? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, she was yeah, giving was on it. Was she? She was doing her job. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Not like that, but she was trying to win this nigga over. You can't say that. The bees hey, hey, man, like that. She wasn't giving the bees knees. She, she just gets doing her job. The views and opinions of Stay <laughs> Harris the Gentleman are his alone. <laughs> <laughs> our reflect, taking file podcast. I know I ain't beat it like that. Said she was doing her job. We got to get this guy on the squad. What kind of job you talking about? Right. You talking about, said flirty eyes is part of the job, huh? <laughs> Make it feel good. She all right. <laughs> all right. Some uh, NBA streaks. The Raptors. Um, as of our recording, have won 15 straight. The Bucks have won 14 out of 15, and the Celtics have won 10 out of maybe 11. Hmm. Top of the East is East, East, East. pretty decent. All Star Weekend is this weekend. Burn, 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 burn. Valentine's Day weekend. I hope y'all have made plans to figure out a way to watch All Star Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Let's start with the Rising Stars game. First question Is anyone going to watch the Rising Stars game? Yeah. World versus It'll USA. It'll probably be the only thing on. Well, actually, Friday I think night. the celebrity game comes on at the same time, so I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> actually, I think that's that one's on Friday night, right? Rise yeah, Stars. they're both on Friday. Yeah. No, I'm not. That's Valentine's Day. I'm definitely not watching the Rising Star game. Today. I'll probably do VR. It was one year that Valentine's Day fell mm-hmm. on All-Star Saturday night. I was pissed. That was a great Valentine's Day. We had a great time that year. And that was the day of fucking, or that was the weekend that uh, Fifty Shades came out, so I had to go see that bullshit. We did that on Thursday. <laughs> It was a great weekend. Did that on th- yeah. Then we had All Star Weekend. We went out. We had like anybody going to Chicago? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, skills Brian competition stars. should be fun. We talked about who was in it last week. Yeah, Chris I Middleton. Let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna cheer for for my boy, but like 
predicting the skills challenge winners. That's like luck. You don't. You, yeah. You never know. Three point contest. Davis Bertans. It's funny how many people are like who. <laughs> he Dev- is. He's on sparking. Fire. Yeah, like, like he's sparking from three. So it's like y'all better figure out the who real quick. <laughs> Uh, Devontae Graham, Joe Harris, Buddy Hill, Zach Levine. Zach Levine, I didn't want to see you there. Just going to say that. I didn't want to see you there. Right. Like, didn't nobody want to see you shoot no threes? Exactly, bro. You tripping. Also, Dame Lillard, Duncan Robinson, and Trey Young. I wanted Davis Bertens on the Bucks. You want everybody on the Bucks. I wanted him before he got traded from Speaking Spurs. He's on the Spurs. He's on the Spurs before they picked him up. This is a, this is true. And I actually mentioned it, I think, on the show. He, <laughs> I recall this distinctively. He'd be thirsty for everybody on. He has a type. Doesn't finish? nobody know who he was? What the fuck? Why did you say you'd be thirsty? He has a type. He does have a type. Uh, did you finish the list? Yeah. Uh, Duncan Robinson and Trey Young. Um, like, apparently George Hill, like, was like, don't even put my name up for yeah, it. He I'm does not, not participate in All-Star. <laughs> even though he's uh, 50% plus from three for, for the season. He said... Uh, I mean, All-Star, he's also hurt right now. But. Yeah, his All-Star week is uh, a va- uh, vacation time. He's like, yeah. it's, it's not worth as a third As a 32-year-old father... I totally get it. Like, there's no way, like, I'm going to All-Star Weekend when I could also have a you week know, <laughs> a week off of work and, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Be somewhere on an island because you got the money to go, like. Yeah. Or Chicago yeah. in the middle of February. <laughs> nah, I'm like, good. Well, I'm good, be. And you ha- he said he's, like, bringing, like, it's, like, a bunch of friends. Like, it's, like, a big thing yeah. where he's, like, I'll pay for your flight there. Y'all pay for something. Or he pays for the, the hotel and they pay for their flight. And I was yeah, like. You got a $30 million contract. You better be paying for everything. <laughs> 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 Grateful motherfucker. I'm just saying. <laughs> he said, "I mean, give me my stuff." Uh, dunk contest. Or are we supposed to be picking winners for a three point? Dame's been really hot. I can see Dame doing something and then performing right after he won a three point contest, <laughs> like a real nigga. <laughs> Actually, that's what I'm cheering for. <laughs> I've just made up my mind. That's what I want to see on Saturday. Anybody but Zach Levine, because he should be in the dunk contest. I like that answer too. Yeah, I like that. Dunk contest, you got Dwight Howard, <laughs> Pat Connaughton, Aaron Gordon, Derrick Jones Jr. Last week, I was surprised I didn't get more, like, people was like, oh, Pat Connaughton can dunk. And I was like, he does the same dunk every time. And then the Bucks <laughs> actually posted a highlight video, and it was literally the same, exactly the right. same dunk <laughs> every time. Like I said before, uh-huh. Vert, Fair there. Mm-hmm. But all of his dunks, you get the oohs and ahs because they're normally out of nowhere because it's a putback. Uh-huh. Or he's doing like a backdoor cut, and you just don't expect the dunk to come because you're mm-hmm. like you ain't watching the ball and the movement so beautiful, and then he's there. Mm-hmm. I really hope that he is is creative. I feel like he got some stuff in his bag. Like I would love for Pat Connaughton to make it to the final. Like I, I don't think see that he has enough self awareness to know like he got to bring some shit out off top. Yeah, like he he's not gonna be agitating to get into the dunk contest if he don't have some shit like to pull out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> the pause. Uh, but yeah, I hope like I'm chair for Pat. But I'm just saying, I'm going into it. I put him and Dwight in like the they the first two out. That's why you know, it's like, like what, what Dwight gonna do? We seen what Dwight can do, uh, and now that that's when he can jump. Yeah, <laughs> what we gonna see now? You got half of that right now. Hey, I've told you, I'm trying to trust and believe what he say. He just he better not he better not try to duck over the damn car. We need you for the rest of the year, my nigga. <laughs> Gonna chill out. Don't do that athleticism back, bro. Could you imagine saying that in mid July? That you need Dwight Howard. Damn. <laughs> Damn. But he's valuable. He's Life comes at you fast, doesn't it? I, man, it really does. Uh, then he got the All Star game with the new rules. Giannis drafted his team. Poorly. LeBron drafted his team. <laughs> hey, our team is pretty close to what me and Damn, Ken drafted. Yeah, yeah. I must say, I think Giannis's team got more flack than it deserved because his. Oh, they got a lot of team his players. Starter, like, his starters were worse, were but he did that on a principle. Yeah. So I was like, I get it. And I he's expected you to. And the shade at uh, Harden. I appreciate that. Yeah, he said he was going to draft somebody who would actually pass the ball. Therefore, he did not draft <laughs> Harden on this team. But didn't they just draft the East and West starters? Pretty much, yeah. except for... Um, no, it was straight East. Was it straight East West? Yeah. Oh, for starters, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron had himself, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Luka Doncic. And James Harden, Giannis had himself, Joel Embiid, Pascal Siakam, Kimba Walker, and Trey Young. Uh, he had put out a statement through the Bucks actually, afterwards, saying that uh, 
he didn't care that uh not that part but like he didn't really care that's the, before i get to the same you're paraphrasing yeah. yeah he didn't care what people were going to think because he said that um through a team spokesperson that picking the two cameroon players was a tribute to his nigerian born parents home continent like he was going to pick joel and pascal regardless okay. of who else was on the board mm-hmm. on principle okay so i can respect that yeah also shout out because the basketball African League or whatever they're calling it, mm-hmm. like that's supposed to be starting up next month. And also, uh, Giannis's team is like all the bigs. Like he got bigs all over the place. Like, they're gonna be defending, defending on Giannis's team. Giannis, like yeah. I want to play point guard. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I mean, he got Kemba and yeah. Trey out there. So they're gonna be dribbling, dribbling. And but... Oh no, wait, I switched it over. My bad. A step back, King Kyle Lowry. Yeah. So wow. <laughs> the rest of Giannis's team was rounded out with Chris Middleton, Bam Adebayo, Rudy Gobert, Jimmy Butler, Kai Lowry. Brandon, Brandon Ingram and Donovan Mitchell. Love those last two picks. I was really hoping he got Donovan Mitchell. So he got two Raptors, two six. Wait, no, one sixer, two Heat, and two Jazz. Yep. For the most part, all teammates are together except for uh, Joel Naturally. and Ben, and then uh, the, yeah. the, the Celtics guys are split. Tatum and uh, Kemba, but everybody else is together. Uh, LeBron's bench was Dame Dalla. That was his first pick. I was like, mm. <laughs> Ben Simmons, Nikola Jokic. Jokic. Mm-hmm. Just joke up. Not Jokovic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. Jason Tatum, Chris Paul, <laughs> Russell Westbrook, and uh, DeMontis Sabonis. Mm. So, it should be fun. Looking forward to watching this weekend. And, and uh, congrats to new dad, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Him and uh, his girlfriend Maria, or uh, not Maria, Mariah, Mariah. had uh, their little baby that boy. Past five years. <laughs> Liam <laughs> Charles, which I think is a cute name. <clears throat> and as we mentioned, Dame Dollar is performing Saturday night at the All Star, you know, festivities. Also, Dame was. We're gonna talk about Dame for a little. He he the radio. I'm gonna give y'all a hint. He the radio this week. <laughs> Actually, the listeners already knew that because they can just read what the radio yeah. song was. But if you didn't. And just clicked on the podcast because you know you fuck with us. Hmm. Or do people do that? Like, I normally read. I'm like, oh, what's it about this week? No, if I fuck with it, I just click yes. it. I'm like, hey, they got a new episode out. I definitely, no, different strokes. Uh, but Dame wasn't fine for Speaking criticizing the refs after a blown, <laughs> gaunt, gosh, after a blown goaltending non call, which led to a Blazers loss versus Utah. He had every right to be upset, and the NBA probably was like, yeah, you was right. We ain't going to fine you for that. <laughs> and just let it go. Yeah. Because he was hot. Yeah, and was after it was, he even tweeted out like, Don't nobody we don't hear that y'all. shit. <laughs> uh, he was hear what y'all talking about. But yeah, as I said, I'm about to go to the radio. And it's Dame this week, so let go. Ken, are you ready to take back explaining what the radio <laughs> segment is to our listeners? Man, no, you've been doing such an amazing job. <laughs> I don't want to take anything from you, you know? <laughs> Are you sure? I am absolutely sure. Give me next week. I'll be ready. Let's go. All right. That's a, that's a bell. Get <laughs> that about it. But no faith in my dick. That's supposed to. That's fucked up. If you are new here, the radio segment is a weekly segment where we play music that is either, you know, done by an athlete, produced by an athlete, some kind of, you know, sport adjacent mm-hmm. relationship to whatever, mm-hmm. i.e. wrestling theme songs. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we do it like a real radio station. Tim is our DJ. DJ, give it to me. <laughs> and uh, we're about to go into our backstage production meeting where I uh, tell the guys what the song's going to be and we talk about how we're going to go live on air. Oh, yeah. Before we start the meeting, can I make a request? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only because I heard it. So, like, FS1's college basketball, like, they use round ball, round ball rock, like, as their bumper music. And I'm like, that's a good ass song. So, like, if you don't remember, it's the NBA on NBC mm-hmm. theme song. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's no, it's yeah. a classic. I've seen it perform live mm-hmm. with like the orchestra. John Tesh, yeah. It's, so, it's correct. For the future, down the road. I want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> we can play it next week. Fair enough. We'll come back next week. This <laughs> week, though. <laughs> oh man, yeah. somebody re- somebody sample that. Never. Mind. Sorry. They should. Yeah. Uh, this week is Dame. Dame like I said. Oh, oh yeah, that will make oh, perfect cold. sense. Dame Dollar. The song is called Moneyball. Okay. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring Jeremiah and someone else, but it's cut off, and I don't want to hit play because wait, actually, I could hit play. Just turn the volume down. Hold on. Oh, it's got an endorsement from Dooch. Yeah, it's Moneyball featuring Jeremiah. Huh? We ain't listening to this one already. 
We listened to uh, Dame with Lil Wayne. He has like four songs with Lil Wayne. But we did double feature. But keep going. Danny and. But yeah. Do you want the uh, song to play as you're talking when you come on air? Or do you want to cue in the song? Um, Let me cue it in. Okay. Ken, would you count us down to go live on air, please? Indeed. Five, four, three, two, one. WTECK Radio 69.9 with 69 is fine. We got Dame Dollar Moneyball. Give it to me. Getting money ain't no to me. No, no, no to me. I like the beat. No, no, no. I've been counting money since the blue fish. No, I got that water bottle bullshit. I can keep it simple just like lemonade. I've been getting paid since I spent a minute. What we thought, throwing money at the room. Yeah, what we thought, throwing money at the room. What we thought, throwing money at the room. What we thought. Took it over. Took it Not a foreign talk, but dreaming up on the sofa. Let the seat back. I'm leaning all in the rover. Make a lot of chips. Life is a game of poker. We are new dame correct. Ha ha Davis to the bank. I got money, money. Celebrities playing rich, just a bunch of junkies. And you know what it means if you see me getting chunky. I own homes and cars and I only fly private. Pull up to the plane, pilots high fiving. Nigga gotta add his own sky mileage. Keep my son in the finest and all fly shit. Really got it, so it's nothing you can say to me. And I ain't losing sleep for you suckers hating me. Being ten toes down, never wavering. Send my prayers, thank the man for how he favored me. keep rolling the cor- I like the chorus so I, I do want to keep hearing that melody good stuff Dane the Washington football team they hired Jennifer King to their coaching staff and which, congratulations which is a move that makes King the NFL's first female African American full time assistant coach Washington is doing a lot of things Ron Rivera went there and was like let me let they me do a black all quarterback <laughs> <laughs> they got a black coach, coach. Female coach. Oh. Latino coach. Head coach. All you got to do is change the name. Washington might be a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King actually spent time working with Riviera and Chica- in, I said Chicago. Riviera. And Charlotte. Oh, my fault. Riviera. <laughs> Riviera. <laughs> I want to add the extra syllable in there so bad. Rivera. There you go. There it is. And Charlotte as a wide receiver coach and intern uh, with the Panthers in 2017. And she uh, was there throughout the last two years, too. So she's going to be the fourth full-time uh, coach, female coach in the league. Followed by Buccaneers assistant defensive line coach Lori Locust and assistant strength and conditioning coach Marvell Jadafar, it looks like. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, along with 49ers offensive assistant San... Or, I'm missing all the words up. Katie Sowers, in addition, uh, King follows Colette Smith as the NFL's first African-American female coach who had a coaching internship with the Jets. She just didn't get hired on full-time afterwards. Fair enough. The Knicks are reportedly hiring player agent Leon Ross. Rose. Rose. Dog, take the ball. (laughs) (laughs) Ken left and they got me all messed up, man. I miss my nigga already, man. Mm -hmm. He can't have the bounce. He had to take care of some things. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the Knicks are hiring former or soon to be former player agent Leon Rose um, as president of basketball operations. Um, Leon Rose has a crazy client list. Um, Did not know Leon Rose was a white man. Had no idea. It don't sound like. like he sounds like a big ball black dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, like I think he's represented Carmelo Anthony, Chris Paul. Um, he formerly represented LeBron James. Um, he actually gave Rich Paul his first job as an agent. Mm. Um, I don't know, plenty of shit, plenty of people. J.R. Smith. Um, and he's also bringing in <laughs> Steve Stout and Worldwide West, aka William Wesley. Um. Although Steve Stout got in trouble for going on first take this morning, and I meant to go back and listen, having to loose it. lips. What exactly was he talking? Do you know what he was talking about? That got him in trouble. No, I'm gonna say no. But okay, I just know I'm he was talking big shit. Like he compared himself to Drake. Like he was saying, like the Raptors brought in Drake to make themselves cooler. I knew whatever he said was bad because the Knicks put out a uh, press release, a press re- uh, statement afterwards, saying like that nigga was not saying <laughs> the right stuff. <laughs> And he said, yeah, I was a little too excited. That's the summary of a press conference. I was doing too much. My Having bad. too much fun. My bad. <laughs> my bad. Like, my bad. Um, Tua Tagovailoa. You knew I couldn't say that. Was that was a great job doing that because that motherfucking name. <laughs> we'll, we'll learn it eventually. He's going into NFL. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, little, I thought Lil Wayne song was about to start. Um, I just wanted to click the lighter. His CT scan. The CT scan on his injured hip uh, was, quote, as possible, I mean, as positive as possible. Good news. Happy yeah. for a young so man. So he still hasn't resumed football activities, but he should be within the coming months. And he was projected to be top 10 at the time before he got uh Not hurt. now, Marquette. Not now. <laughs> Hey, alumni, you want to give us some money? Give me some more money. Y'all might have to call me when I get my tax refund. Uh, <laughs> give me a little something. You WM ain't getting a cent from me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some news that'll warm uh, Tim's heart. Pitchers and catchers will report for swing, spring so, training this week. Yeah, baseball uh, starts back. So I was thinking about it. I was like, well, baseball starts in a week. Well, this week. So there's like a little lull right now since there's no football. Oh, the XFL, but XFL had an interesting week. No NFL. Keep going. <laughs> no, XFL was just past. He said, no, said no NFL. But yeah, no NFL. No NFL. He's trying to help So it's like a, a little, like a little on, window right on now where it's only NBA. So I was like, Eric probably's enjoying this little window right now. I mean, it's an all-star weekend. Like, I don't wanna... yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so. Baseball's back. Are you looking forward to anything specific? Actually, I am. I said I'm I'm trying to uh, dive back into baseball how I used to. I'm trying to get back into sports. Trying like to dive into to. them balls. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm not saying all <laughs> of that. Them bats and balls. I'm not saying all of that. Pitching and catching. <laughs> <laughs> you done? Feel free to let your laughs out. <laughs> Do you are you done? We had a guest walk in the building. This is what I need a can spirit left. I need a new spirit <laughs> to come in the room. We have a, a listener in the building, Hayes. Shout out to Hayes. Hayes Hood was good. So you ready to take the ball back? No, you can keep rolling. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm just going to keep drinking my water. And- Anyways, baseball is bike. <laughs> there was a lot of shit going on, too. You want to talk about the MLB? Uh, who, what's the league owner name? Rob league Manfred? Owner. Commissioner? Commissioner? Commissioner. Bro, and they've been... Rob Manfred. Terminologies. Dude, they've been lambasting him, similar. too. Like, he been... So anyway, so the uh, MLB decided that they wanted to... They're seriously considering... Um, Expanding the playoff field starting in 2022. Don't look at this cheating stuff. Look at this. Look at these new ideas. <laughs> right. They're like, ah, there's a lot of shit going on. So pretty much what they're saying, according to uh, Joe Sherman of the New York Post, the league is seriously weighing in, uh, increasing the number of teams from which each league that reaches the postseason right. from five to seven, starting with the 2022 campaign. So in such a system, the team with the best record in the AL and the NL would receive a bye for the wildcard round. That would leave two other division winners and four wild card teams in each league, and the two division winners and wild card team with the best record will host every game of a best of three series. Mm-hmm. Whichever division winner with the best record of the two that have to play in the wild card round would have to get a, will be able to pick their opponent. Mm-hmm. So, and then the other division winner would be able to pick second, and the remaining two wild cards would face each other. In addition to giving more teams a chance to win a championship, this will lead to plenty of bu- uh, bulletin board material heading into the postseason. Mm-hmm. 
So it's. I feel like that meme where it's all the, the math numbers and stuff. Right. It's just going to be a lot of shit where they were like, okay, well, if we go ahead and try to eliminate them right here, and then, like, the Brewers would have been cool last year, too. So let's act. Thank you. Let's actually use last season's National League playoff pitcher to illustrate how this might look. Because everything you said, I'm like, I hear you, but I still don't get it. So I'm actually read this example, and I'm like, Tim, I might like, not. Nah, if I don't get it, I'm okay. going to tell you I don't get it still. <clears throat> Dodgers had the best record. Mm-hmm. So they would get the bye to the divisional round. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Braves, who had the next best record, followed by the Cardinals. Okay. So they the next two up. Right. The wild cards in order would have been the Nationals, the Brewers, the Mets, and the Diamondbacks. Okay. So all of them in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. That's a lot of teams. Uh, the Braves would then get to choose their opponent from between the bottom three wild cards. So that's Brewers, the Brewers, Mets, Mets, and Diamondbacks. Right. Next up, the Cardinals would then choose between whoever the Braves didn't pick among the Brewers, Mets, and Diamondbacks. Whichever team wasn't picked would then face the Nationals. And then those two will face each other. Right. No, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever team left. Okay. On a that's that's really it. Like that's so then, that's how it would have shaken out. So then basically the winner of the Nationals the winner of the two wild card series would then they would play. then play whoever got the bye. Correct. And then the other two teams oh. two winners would play each other. Mm-hmm. I, that that seems like a, a It's lot. a lot more bullets and boy material. The picking your opponent thing is interesting. Oh yeah, that's that sounds like some fun. Like, <laughs> like you said, that's, that's bulletin board material. It's like, oh, you picked us. That means you think we soft. Mm. You think it's sweet over here. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I kind of like it. Like, I would hate to be like I. I would kind of hate it as the higher seat. Like, you kind of like, okay, well, who do you think is sweet? Right, them. <laughs> <laughs> And they look at you, oh, okay. <laughs> they said you ain't the bee's knees. Man. Right. <laughs> you the opposite. That would have been interesting, though. Like, the Dodgers probably would have. They the probably calves cankles. Oh, mm-hmm. like, what were you the opposite of the bee's knees? The calves cankles. What the fuck is the calves cankles? Something that's the opposite of the bee's knees, niggas. We flying, on the, we, we flying right now. I don't know. We're making this up as we go. You tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's what they trying to do in baseball. I like it. I think so. The NBA is like trying to change their rules up. MLB mm-hmm. is changing their playoffs. So what's the NFL going to do? I just don't, they going to steal they, from the they XFL. They add another regular season game. <laughs> steal from yeah. the XFL is what they're going to do. I like they kick off. We'll get there. Hmm. Oh, Ibaka and OG Ananobli. That was funny. <laughs> the the scarf one. They were. It was some show. I think it was oh, like through yeah, GQ. Uh, uh, so Ibaka has like a weekly show. I don't know if it's weekly, but it's regularly scheduled show. I don't know what he does on it, but he <laughs> he usually interviews like different people. Like I've That's seen him do like it. uh, I've seen him do t- Tiffany Haddish. That didn't sound right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Durant has been on there. Uh, I think Kyle. Is that uh, when Kyle you have Kyle. eat weird foods? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, OG on and they went shopping. And, I don't know. Right. So you, do you see because you come from London, that's why you're good at fashion? Probably a little bit. I was born with it. I think it just happened. Well, you know, I know me and you are different styles. No, we're know? the same style. No, we're going to the same style. We have the same style. I put you on how to dress. You put me on? Yeah. <laughs> you know I did. I put you on Valentino. Right. I put you on uh, denim jackets. OG. Bl- Blitz Yaga stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Uh, I put you on a hair impressive. OG, you say you put me in fashion. Uh, wow. You're blitz I think I'm done here. I put you, I'm done. We I, don't, I, on, I don't do. I don't do. Uh, I'm done. I put you on scarves. He's upset. You know what we done here today? Oh, he's pissed. But did I put you like, on scarves? You OG, you, you tell me. Then we <laughs> done. Today. What about we scarves? Done. But what about scarves? What that? What OG, about I'm scarves? telling you. If you say it. But what about scarves? You put me in fashion, then I'm done. But what about scarves? I guess I'm done. But what about scarves? I guess I'm done. <laughs> but what about scarves? What do you mean about scarf, OG? You saw me with my scarf. You're like that scarf's fire. I'm gonna get one too. And you got one. And next time when I was wearing mine. You had one too. You act like you did it first, but I had the scarf first. Oh, OG, let me tell you something, yeah. okay? OG, this is your second second years in the league. Third. Third year in the league. Yeah. Okay, I've been in the scarf game <laughs> ten years now. The scarf. You haven't though. Yes. One and two, OG. I don't, I don't dress, man. But you saw me in my scarf. OG, I don't dress, OG. I do art, bro. <laughs> but you saw me no, in my no, scarf. No, no, tell me, please. You know I do art, right? I like my scarves a lot. 
And you copied that. <laughs> you got me sweating one hour. <laughs> <laughs> he was really mad about that. He was pissed. Oh, gee. <laughs> How oh, <do> oh, gee. <laughs> And that's what it's like arguing with a 22 year old. Like, honestly, they're just gonna troll you to death. Just troll the hell out of him, bro. He just stuck on one thing. What about my scarves? <laughs> what about scarves? Though? What about scarves? But what about scarves? Give a fuck about what? nothing else you talking about. What about scarves? What about them scarves? It was that one time you seen me. <laughs> out of all these years you've been in the league doing these shits, you seen right. me that one. You're 45 time. years old, but I, I introduced you to scarves. <laughs> I put you on, bro. You ain't. Hey, you might have a point. Yeah, right. I have to check Serge's. Uh, Walk in tired. Oh, I don't you, know. Now you got to do some research. I got to do some research. I, I, yeah, that's what you're gonna be looking at. Right. You gonna list your is friends to help you things, do some research. There's other things online of search I should be researching. I don't know. Hey, that's my just wife. do your research. Is there other things online I should be researching? <laughs> oh, okay. Next, uh, <laughs> <laughs> UFC 247 was this past weekend. Make sure you check out the Dojo Talk podcast to get a recap on that. Please do. Uh, but we will say this. John Bones Jones. Who? Matter John fact. Bones. This is why I told you to take the ball. John Bones Jones Pause. thinks that he, <laughs> he thinks that it's inevitable <laughs> that he ends up working with WWE in the future. And that it would be a dream come true. Well, sir, if you think it's a dream come true, well, then clearly it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Vince is probably Because Vince salivating. already wanted you. Pause. And if you want it, pause. <laughs> why wouldn't it happen? Pause again. <laughs> we'll just move right on. Chargers agree to mutually part ways with Philip Rivers ahead of 2020 free agency. So is Tom. I mean, they didn't officially agree to part, though. No. The Patriots no. have been saying, like, please come back. Like, we, we they, don't want they've this. They've been day. thirstier than the Wolves. Remember they said they pay him like $30 million? And Tom said, I don't want that shit. <laughs> Give me some help. No, he wants to get paid and have help. Help me, please. He wants everything. Help me, please. <laughs> but nah, I'm. You know what? It's the end of an era for, for Philip. Eli screwed him. How? I think he worked out better in uh, San Diego yeah. than he would have in New York. You think so? I do. Hmm. I the do. world may never know. Those are some fun uh, Charger teams. They just could was some cold Charger teams. The too. amount of talent that they had, the fact that they never did, they never even made a Super Bowl. Like that's crazy. <laughs> they made some. That's why, like, as a, that's why as a Packers fan, like, appreciate it. Like, yeah, yeah. you only got two, but. They could be worse. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, damn, you had LaDainian in his prime. Sean Merriman. Antonio Gates. Yeah. Damn, your backs was Michael the Burner Turner and Daryl Sproles, Darren Sproles at one point. And you still had Antonio Gates in his prime? You can't do much when t Tom Brady's in your conference. <sighs> like, I mean, that's what it comes like. I mean, wasn't they got two championships in that time? Uh, Roethlisberger. Yeah. He did. Ben came in and set the world on fire. Peyton got two. Yep. The only ones. I feel like. No, it's probably been other ones. Flacco. But... <laughs> Flacco. Did he did it. joke. He did get a ring. That's what got him that contract. <laughs> but, I mean, most of the time's been... Yeah. yeah. I get Fair enough. Same. Uh, Eric Former Charger. Yeah, speaking of. That's where I remember him from. But he was in the Rams this year. He had uh, Eric Weddle announced that he's retiring after 13 seasons in the NFL. Best of luck for you going forward, buddy. Pete Rose, he asked the MLB to end his lifetime banishment, and he pointed at the Astros and said, look what them niggas was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. Let me be back in, in y'all good graces. I so, think he has a point. I kind of read up on Pete Rose's story again, he just to kind of refresh it. He didn't even like... So he gambled. He was the, in 1989, he was the manager of the Reds. Right. Mm -hmm. And he started gambling, and the commissioner at the time called him to the office and was like, hey, you gambling on these teams and games and shit like that? He said, nah, I ain't doing none of that. But he did, and he actually gambled on the Reds while he was the manager of them. So. He had faith in his boys. He lied right? for 15 years. And then he finally. And he came him. out in the book in 2004 and said, you know, yeah, you know, I actually did do that shit. And I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. So basically, he got, he got banned more so for lying about it. But. Right. And so he's, he's saying now he wish he would have said it right in the first place. So he's showing remorse and shit like, like most, that. That's how lies you. work. Yeah. You should just be honest. <laughs> and so, honestly, I mean, shit, it's been long enough. Why not, Pete? Then let Pete back in. I feel like Pete should be... <laughs> Trump gave him an endorsement. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like... Keep Pete out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Pete... Keep Pete. Pete's, uh, Pete was cheating. For bro. Pete's sake. No, Pete was, <laughs> no, Pete was cheating too. I mean, it's not cheating, but it's cheating. We sum up. His gambling. 
It was. It's not cheating. It ain't cheating. He gambling. He he got faith in his boys. My team is this good. Let me put some money down <laughs> on it. I don't see anything. No, I'm joking. But I mean, that's the gist of it. But yeah, I, he does have a case though. I'll give him that because this shit has been wild as fuck with all this um, Astros sign stealing shit. And they said Carlos Beltran was like the the co-founder of the whole conspiracy, <laughs> bro. He was the motherfucking directing the, the bang on the trash cans. Oh, did you know about that? Mm-hmm. So, I stopped paying attention because I was like, they they guilty. I don't need to know more. So what what they found out about it was when they found out what pitches would break. Carlos Beltran would have them bang on the trash can and let them know when it's a breaking ball. Mm-hmm. So at certain points when during the game, like there was a dude on Twitter that went down these games and and he showed where they were banging on trash cans. So if it was a breaking ball and they banged on the trash cans, this dude was just sitting on the pitches. Mm-hmm. And if they sit on the pitches, they just waiting for a breaking ball to drop right into their lap and boom, it's into the moon. So <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. just say this now: yeah, former no. Blue Jays reliever uh, Mike Bowsinger. Uh, he's electing to sue the sign still in Astros because, as you were just pointing out, it was unfair. No, nah, but he just trash. I don't know if he, can <laughs> sue. He, he was. Can trash. you sue for stuff being unfair? Because life's not fair. He's saying like, cheating is cheating, but he, what he's his saying argument that they drove is his value down. And yes. he could oh, because his last okay. game was against the Astros, and they I got kicked his I ass got you. in I got one you. like three quarters of an inning, bro. Like you. he didn't even make it out, and then he I went back he down to the minors. I thought he was just suing on principle, like when I played against them, it wasn't it was bad, and it was, it was an unfair, bad man. right? But yeah. they said he said okay. I he, they messed up my career. Granted, he was like 0 and 3 in like 11 appearances. He that great and he was like a 6.3 So he RA. didn't have much room for error. That's all. I get it. I get <laughs> so it. I was like, wait, you really it. ain't got no dog in this one. I get it. You tried, though. But he, I mean, he got more than just that. He wanted to put the money to like charities and shit like that, too. Like the 31 million they won for winning the World Series, he wanted them to give it to charities. It's a whole other kid and caboodle with him. Let's talk some WWE stuff. Wrestling! Simone Johnson, daughter of The Rock, is training full-time at WWE's Performance Center. She's on track to become the WWE's first ever fourth-generation wrestler. I think that'd be dope. That's tight. I Good can't wait her. to see her. I hope it works out for her. I hope she cut promos like her daddy. Shayna Baszler attacked Becky Lynch on Raw. What the fuck was that, bro? Bit the back of her neck. Did you see that? And blood flew all Dude, over the place. Dude, she just pulled her hair back. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Looking like a 2020 gangrel. <laughs> I was like, where's the bruise music at? I mean, why is she biting necks like this? What this is going on she here? She don't need to do that. But did you watch the whole segment? Yes. She oh. don't need to do that. She They're... did all of that shit. Then Becky out here, they just walking her to the back. The ambulance people suck. They just walking her slowly to the back. Then Becky, for some reason, steals the damn ambulance. Someone she's going to drive herself and goes to the hospital. Then later on the night, she comes back with said injury still on the back of her damn neck in the stolen ambulance. I mean, what the fuck is this, bro? You playing game? Oh, my God. I'm like, who is breathing? So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the king come back? It's the song. Damn. Pew, 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 pew. You gotta admit, if you're gonna be biting people, at least come out to the brood. Like, come out, come out to the brood music. Oh, Julie would love that. I mean, I get why. Like, it's actually a really, I enjoy it. You know, retro. Really, really. Anywho, but. This song, this theme song, what? This song had a little, you know, it's I like 90s. The theme. I do like the theme song. So they could, they could spruce this up a little bit for, you know, that's what they're going to do. Like, go no, all in. Shannon's not going to be here go biting people. Go all in. Turn her shit. into a vampire for all I care. <laughs> she could pull it off. I can see her being a vampire. You character. don't care that she's an actual MMA fighter. You don't care about the way she's been built this whole time beforehand. Yeah, just make her a vampire. She comes up and bites a neck. Super Showdown is February 27th with Goldberg versus The Fiend and Brock versus Ricochet for their respective titles. I am not watching that. I will. I'm not support. I don't support the Saudi shows. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Asia Smith made history this week as the first full time uh, female African American referee to sign with WWE. Really? I mean, hmm. okay. And Congratulations. I I, I've never seen a black woman referee. Mm. I mean, shit, like, they just got a white one, like, two years ago, so. Yeah. I think Jacqueline was, like, a ref, like, very briefly, though. But she was, like, it was. This special guest I, it wasn't, like, I, It wasn't, like, st- storyline, though. Like, she was an actual referee for, like, a brief period. Remember when mm. she was in Right to Censor? Yeah. I was thinking about them yeah. heels. <laughs> what heel? No, heels. Like, when remember, Right to oh, Censor was heels. Oh, she the heels she was wearing. I said, she wasn't wearing <laughs> no heels, dog. But I hear you. You saw him. I got you. Stable. Yep. Matt Hardy was possibly written out of WWE on Monday as his contract is set to expire. That shit was wild. So I had it didn't hit me to this morning to how would that happen. So you sent Matt Hardy out 
to def- to ask Randy Orton why he fucked up Edge, but Matt Hardy is was fired because Edge Edge was fucking with his chick. So Man, Vince that was like fifteen years ago. So Vince of all the people to send out to defend Edge, you sent Matt Hardy <laughs> to defend Edge to get concerto. <laughs> I was like, that's some fucked up shit. You know, that's real fucked up. Vince is Vince is sick. He be having his moments sometimes. I'm like, damn, that's bogus as a motherfucker though. And then they it took him a minute to acknowledge that real life BS anyways. But say love you. <laughs> and WrestleMania 37, as we mentioned, will take place at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. It's on the vision board. Yeah. We'll be there. You coming to uh, WrestleMania with us next year, Hayes? <laughs> uh, where we at? XFL. Did you so, watch any of? It? Hell no, I knew you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not a second. Uh, the XFL has made its debut this past weekend. Um, so I will eat crow and say that they actually did. It came Pretty to well. fruition. It no, did. I mean, oh no, the I don't know game. how good or bad it was. I said they would never play a game. Yeah, you did. That's because the other league didn't make it. The, the clan league ain't make it half a season. Yeah. We'll see if this <laughs> one does. Um, but on Saturday, the D.C. Defenders won the first ever game, 31-19 against the Seattle Dragons. And then the Houston Roughnecks, mm. I need a roughneck, uh, beat the Los Angeles Wildcats 37-17. to um, On Sunday, the New York Guardians beat the Tampa Bay Viki- Vikings, Vipers, Vipers. 23-3. And the St. Louis Battlehawks beat the Dallas Renegades 15-9. to um, And the Wildcats, uh, after they lost 37-17, <laughs> fired their defense. Hey, bro, you got to get the fuck up out of here, bro. You gave up 37 in the first game? Game one? You giving up You giving up like that? Nah, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. Damn. 37-17. So, I was talking to my guy, AJ. And uh, he said that Houston actually was like geeked about them winning uh the xfl game they're like shit they don't know nothing about it too much he was like but shit it was houston we was winning and shit so we said fuck it we win it yeah <laughs> and i mean they need to get the taste out the mouth of uh that shit liking that they got yeah. the hands of kansas city um XFL, the xfl the games weren't bad um the, the last game was actually was pretty slow the, the 15 to 9 game yeah and that's what marquee or was it marquette king had that punt. Duh, that punt was beautiful that punt was fucking what beautiful. What the fuck was the gunner doing, though? Like, I have no idea. I think the gunner thought that the returner touched it. But if he's, like, not anywhere I near know. it, like, why I are you know. jumping on it I like know. a dumbass? Like, I know. And like, touch it. Everybody's standing around it like this. Like, why you, the fuck you, are you flying in you there like that? You think you the only person that saw it touch him? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you might be like, my vision was that good. Y'all don't, y'all don't take me later. Like, hey, uh, hey, this for the game, bro. Like, no, nah, duh. Chill out. Sit your ass down somewhere. Take me later. But, but it wasn't that explains no why he's later. on special teams in the XFL. Uh, <laughs> damn. Damn, why you doing like that? <laughs> Dang. Why did you do him that way? Why did you do him that way? Is that the XFL? You back again? She was sharing. again. He was singing. No, she was singing. Nah, bro. Don't don't oh. look at, don't look all weird and shit. Yeah, you were singing. Was I singing I like Cher that time? You kind of sound. You, it wasn't as bad <laughs> as That's what I'm saying. Time. Like, it didn't sound like Cher that time. The <laughs> Edge one did. I'll give you that. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. That sounded like Cher. That was funny. What I just did did not sound like Cher. Maybe I just sound like Cher. I got to hear you sing a whole song now. <laughs> Never. <laughs> do you believe in love after love? You know how we do be loving Tony. That was my song. That was my Tony. shit. Tony Brax is my girl. That's, that's, that's more of my... Uh, Vocal oh, range. The the deep. Damn, she had a deep voice when she was singing. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the XFL's debut game drew 3.3 million viewers. Uh, That's and actually the pretty decent. Peaked at the end of the broadcast. So that means people watched it to the end. And um, tuned in too. Like I wasn't and, watching, but now yeah. I'm looking. Uh, last year, the Alliance of American. Family football insurance <laughs> clan league. Uh, drew, clan league <laughs> drew 2.9 million viewers for its first game. The AAF never reached anything remotely close to that again and shut down before completing its first season. I think uh, the XFL is actually going to do all right. But will it get a second season? Of course. I think so. I think it's going to uh, actually football is a lot more expensive to run than something like a three on three basketball league. So mm. I'm not sure they have better. Uh, I don't know. Like, the, the benefit of the XFL is, one, they have better na- name recognition. 
Um, they have better broadcasting uh, situation too. They took their time. They didn't try to launch some shit like to beat the other guy. Like they're like we're gonna. I mean, they they're trying to do our it. own thing. Yeah, which is good because first time I think it was just launched to try to combat the NFL. Yeah, that's what they said <laughs> in the well, not necessarily to combat the NFL because like they were a spring league, but. Mm-hmm. Like they they launched it like way too quickly. Like he he said that in the, in the XFL uh, thirty for thirty. Yeah, like basically like we did we didn't have everything lined, lined up, up the way we should have. Yeah, they really did rush it though. Hmm. Which is what the a the clan league did as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like their kickoff formation. Like, so the kicker is back a little bit, and then the receiving and the defending lines are like five yards apart. Yep. And then you got the returner all the way back. All the way so. in the back. And then you, so you, it's only like a five-yard collision. It's, it's up to the it return to find the, the lanes. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I kind of like that. I fuck with it. Yeah, I would agree. Cool. Uh, part two of the Michael Vick 30 for 30 aired last Part two week. was not as fun as part one. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> not as did not Oh, it enjoy. was the dogs and the Ooh, jail. I forgot, and... I forgot the details. I was looking like, oh, he, they, who. And then that crazy nigga that's on Mike Vick team. I think it's his brother. I can't remember the nigga, but every time he talked, I'm like, nigga, shut up. Like, <laughs> he just looked, he was sitting there like, I kid you not, you know, it's something just about dog fighting. You know, I can't explain it. It's something, something I like. If you ask me what i do it again, yeah, I would. I'm like, no, nigga, don't say you do it again. <laughs> Mike is trying to clear his name. He can't have people around Actually, him. Why you on probation and That's shit. good. Like, it, it show, it's a contract. It shows, like, but, yeah. Mike is actually, like, on the road of rehabilitation. And, like, he's contrite. And mm-hmm. you had this other he's dude. He's remorseful and all that. Yeah, like, his other dude he's like, said, man, I'd I do, do that shit again. They, they kill horses, don't they? I'm like, do they? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure about that. He probably wouldn't know something like that. I, I haven't actually it. finished part two though. Um, I only saw the end, so like I, I came in. See, I only saw the beginning because I think the Bucks were playing that night. They were. Yeah, so I was watching that, and then when that ended, then I went over to the documentary, and it was already to the point where he was on the Eagles. So, and when the Bucks game went off, I had it on DVR, so mm. I went back to the beginning and I fell asleep. And I didn't go back <laughs> to it because the mayor hasn't seen part one yet, yeah. and I want to just watch it go all through. the way through. Yeah, but yeah, it's been it's been good. Uh, yeah, part two gets. Gets gets emotional. I forgot how many teams he was on at the end. Oh shit! After the Eagles, he went to Jets. Then he was on. um, He ended with Pittsburgh, but I feel like there was somebody in between. I forgot those years. He signed like a series of one year deals on purpose, probably. He should have stayed with the Raiders, though. Yeah, I mean, he went where they. I mean, you (laughs) won. Anyways, uh, former Boston outfielder Mookie Betts, 2017 AL MVP Mookie Betts. Young Mookie Betts. <laughs> and pitcher David Price were traded to the Dodgers for Jeter, Downs, and additional prospects. We mentioned the uh, Mookie trade on air when it was happening, but all this other stuff had happened, apparently. Then it started going to shit. <laughs> then they had to restructure the trade, and this is what we ended up with. Uh, Marquette University, the basketball team, they have moved into the AP Top 25, number 18, for the first time this season. After they upset Butler seventy six to fifty seven, I was like, "Dang, first time the whole season." So, so what did you do for a uh, National Marquette Day? I wore my Marquette socks, uh, Marquette sweats, Marquette sweatshirt. Watch part of the game. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to a game on that. We went to a game on National Marquette Day a couple years ago. That was actually really fun. I need to go back to a Marquette game. Tickets are not actually that expensive. Yeah, I should have went this time. There was plenty of empty seats when I was watching. Oof. Oh, this game, yeah. I mean, it was also like a, it's a 11 holiday. o'clock tip yeah. or something like that. So, We're not a holiday, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, police officer <laughs> Sue. Wait, what? So remember at the when the Raptors clinched the championship in Oakland and like the cop claimed this that. This wasn't all dropped. Hmm? The the criminal part was dropped. Oh, like now Lord the Jesus. cop is suing not an actual cop. Messiah Ujiri for assault for everything. He's suing for damages. He's suing for uh, uh what is it? Didn't he say he was like out on like uh like he said he said he was on disability. Yeah, he needed his medical bills. 
He was mentally distraught. He's physically distraught. His reputation's destroyed. Emotionally, he can't do it no more. Like, the whole yeah. freaking... I, he, he was going to be my blow to whistle. Because I'm like, duh, you really out here? It took you that long. You damn near took you a year to bring this shit back. And now you're trying... I was like, wow. I'm like, and it, it did all of that. Mm. And I went back and watched the video just to, just to see how he reacted at that time. If he was if he, if he broke his face... <laughs> If he was laying on the ground, <laughs> sniffing dirt, face. anything. The man literally was standing there after he got muffed a little bit. It looked like he, he may have just got done getting muffed. But it wasn't nothing wrong with dude, did it? No. So what the fuck? I'm like, okay, so somebody in his ear, he might be coming. I, I don't know. You know what? Let me not. I don't know you that know man's what? story, but he, it looks it sounds fishy as fuck. Like one, he gonna roll up the story. He gonna roll up the court with like the neck brace and like, right. the, like, crutches what the fuck? and shit. <laughs> But also, like, I, I fuck with it because, like, he's going to lose and he's going to spend a whole bunch on lawyer fees. That's wild, bro. Like, like he about to ruin really, his whole... Who convinced you that you finna get something? Mm-hmm. And he's suing the NBA separately, too, for the same shit. This NBA and the Raptors. I think, and Golden State. He he's might, suing all of them. They just sue everybody. <laughs> he's suing everybody. Oh, you got money. Kevin Durant still he uses... Won't after uh, this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kevin Durant still uses uh, burner Twitter accounts. Wasn't he defending that or some shit? He was on, uh, he was on All the Smoke. We, we want the smoke. <laughs> we, we want the smoke. smoke. I'm glad they won last night. Did you see his, him and uh, Bianca Belair's, Montrez Ford and Bianca Belair's Black History Month fits? Oh, I gotta go check it out. No. I'll find them for you. They was cold. Wait, where's the sound at? I like them. Hold on. We want Black the smoke. Black Theater Burner Ford, I would have said, fuck it, I'm Kevin Durant. You think back in the day, pre-social media, whatever they put out is the truth. And yep. we never had a platform. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's why I love it when you're out here. I didn't like to use a burner phone. I would have said, fuck it. I'm Kevin Durant. I'm going to cuss you out. He talks some shit. I'm going to talk some shit. I'm going to speak my mind. You I'm know still I mean? going to do the burner thing. I'm still going to do that. <laughs> you still on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some shit that you just got to be like, saying, these, these folks are all way. But I'm away. saying, fuck it, bro. I'm saying, if I'm you, like, you know, if you come for me, I'm coming back. And, so oh, yeah, you. for sure. Some people I'm going to come back on my regular account. But if I'm going to try and do my thing, hey, I'm so, like, hey, look out. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Look yeah, out. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got the burner. It's yeah, still yeah. out there. Yeah, it's yeah. lurking. I just slipped up that one time. You know why I slipped <laughs> All right, don't incriminate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't give a fuck no more, dog. Hell yeah, I'm still use a burner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why good. would I stop? Right. Uh, and our last point before we get into uh, blow the whistle: the NBA announced a multi-year partnership with Hennessy on Monday, making it the <laughs> league's new official spirit. Where's Jr. With the deal, the world's best-selling cognac was Earl. Also becomes the official spirit of the WNBA and USA basketball. Did they cut him a check? Hennessy replaces Jack Daniels as the uh, official spirit of the league. So Jack Daniels didn't put up a big enough check, and Hennessy said, "We see an opportunity to partner here." Did Earl get become an ambassador or something? No, you ain't gotta be Earl. You just gotta like Hennessy. Now Hennessy and the NBA. Hey, hold on. Gotta talk to Hennessy real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone plays for for somebody who worked for Hennessy. Because we got to talk. If you're going to do this NBA thing, okay, y'all should make it special. And y'all should bring white Hennessy to the States mm. as long as this deal is on the table. Because you should be giving us your best. Like, NBA players give their, their best every single night. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want Reagan. We don't want that no more. I can't drink Hennessy. But if you give me some white Hennessy. And a sponsorship. <laughs> you will make some money with some white Hennessy in the state. You should bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, they would. You can even overcharge. I know how much y'all selling for on them boats. <laughs> I don't know shit. Not I ain't gonna buy it. I'm, te- I'm talking to Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I see the prices y'all be selling for on the cruises and whatnot. Y'all can charge like an extra twenty, and y'all will still make money in the states because that's what people pay in the states for it. Anyway, right. <laughs> actually, it would be cheaper than what we pay for it <laughs> for people who come back from cruises. So, Hennessy, bring the white Hennessy to the end. Bring it. Bring it to the States. We need it. Now, blow the whistle. All right, now, that's enough out of you. You know what? Tee his ass up. All right, my blow the whistle is on Charles Barkley and Shut the up. wider NBA on TNT family. So, like, the Bucks played 
on uh on Thursday night on TNT and like usually I avoid national discussion cuz they don't really watch the games and they don't know what they're talking about half the time and this time I couldn't cuz the Bucks were playing and it was the trade deadline and then there was like the the Rockets and Lakers and you didn't have an option cuz it wasn't broadcast nope. on uh, Fox Sports Wisconsin nope um so I had to watch and I you know I, it was on um in between the games and like these dudes really don't watch. Like it's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like uh, the most egregious part was okay. post game. Um, Charles Bar- uh, Ernie speak? Ernie Johnson asked, uh, you know, the Bucks are on pace to win more than seventy games. Do you think that they'll make that mark? And Charles Barkley goes, "No." And they're like, "Oh, well, why, Chuck?" <laughs> because uh, you know, like they're so far ahead. Like once they get the the top record locked up like they'll start resting players because uh Giannis Middleton and Bledsoe they have a lot of miles on them and you know like they're not necessarily going to sit them out games but they're going to limit them to like 25 30 minutes per game if you look at the current minutes per game for the Bucks yeah nobody has more than 31 minutes a game nobody nobody has 31 minutes a game period <clears throat> like they're all underneath that mark Bledsoe averages like 26 a <laughs> game <laughs> so Again, like, you're not paying attention at all if that's your take. Like, you're just pulling shit out your ass. Which is why they probably don't talk about us. Because they're not watching us. But it makes me question, like, obviously I know, like, what the truth is about the bus because I watch them. So, like, I'm, I question, like, what, like, I question their credibility on all the teams, really. Like, unless it's, like, the Warriors from last year or, like, the Lakers now where they're on pretty much every week. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not watching games that they're not getting paid to watch, essentially. But they also have like the sh- the loudest voices in NBA media, NBA Twitter, NBA discourse. And so like they yeah. they drive conversation <clears throat> with faulty information, which is crazy because that's their like you said that's their job. Like mm-hmm. it's not like us who all we all have full time jobs, right? And then we come here and we do like this is our not at work doing work, yeah, work, <laughs> and we. We we might be able to talk to Chuck, talk, talk about some things. <laughs> like like I get the value of having them one like they're big names, so they bring in ratings. They're also very entertaining. I won't lie. They are entertaining, and also like they can kind of speak to like the psyche of a superstar or an NBA player. Like this is what he could be thinking. This is what you know. Like this right. is how I became successful, so I kind of can talk to that because they're legends. But like they're so stuck in the era in which they play, like they. They they only see it. Yeah, they only see it through that lens. So, like, that was the first night after, like, the the Rockets traded Capella. So, like, now it's like, they're all in on small ball. This shit ain't going to work. Like, (laughs) you need a big man to rebound. You need a. So, like, they're talking about that pregame. And then, like, they get to halftime and, like, well, it's only a half a game. Like, yeah, it's tied now, but it's not going to work in the playoffs or it's not going to work in the second half. And then after the game, after the Rockets won, then it's. Well, you know, uh, it it's, just, time time. it's just the Lakers. <laughs> like, they just didn't play it right, but uh, nobody else is going to do that. And they going to, you know, like, and it's just like they can't admit defeat. You know what I mean? Like, that's fair because, it, and also, like, them talking about the Bucks and Sixers game, like, it was just all about, like, how the Sixers are soft. It's like, nobody's acknowledging that the team that has the most wins in the league just, like, kind of bust their ass. Like, but no, it's they it's did because, when they won. It's because the NB is soft. Yeah, when we lost. Oh, they was all over our shit, bro. No, no they, you know what? No. When we lost, they were praising Philly. Mm-hmm. When we beat them, they were still trying to it's uplift about, Philly. It's all about what Philly did wrong. Nothing about Milwaukee. It's going to be that way until the Bucks win it. Yeah. But, I mean, Philly ain't won shit. I'm just saying. For Milwaukee, it's going to be that way until they win it. For some yeah. reason, the narrative around us is it worked in the regular season. It ain't going to work in the playoffs. Although, last year it was, was the first year in Bud's system. And the first year we won a playoff series since mm-hmm. 2001. So it's one I, game from the finals. I, I, two, 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 but well, I, two. I, I don't, I don't like the narrative. It feels like they was thrown on us too early. Like that's, I'm also tired of the, the phrase narrative. Like, we're not crafting stories here. We're not like telling fiction. Like, this is literally what is happening now. So, like, narrative doesn't fucking matter. Like, it's not about like, oh, this player is like dealing with adversity or <laughs> this player is like, uh, he, this is first year. So it, that shit don't matter. It's like results. Like, tell me what's happening. Like, if the MV, if the MVP isn't about like who is the best player or who is the most valuable player, like, there's the story behind them shouldn't like 
So are you saying you don't care about narratives as they relate to an individual player? I'm saying, like, they're driven, like, they only talk about, like, what the story, the best story is what's getting told. And it's like, tell me, like, tell me what's going on. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm more about facts, not opinions. But I think that's a, I think that's a you thing because you are a facts, not opinions guy. But most people like narratives because it makes them feel connected to whatever the story is or the player or the situation. But it's like you get so wrapped up in a narrative, like you're ignoring what is actually happening. Like, no, I, I would agree with that. That's why I said the narrative around the Bucks doesn't make sense because it's like we had <laughs> one year in the playoffs where we actually won a game. Yeah, but I'm, that's why I'm saying mm-hmm. like the narrative, like the focus on narrative, like the thing about like, oh, we just need to find like what the great, the best narrative is. It's like you get lost trying to find in the, the forest for the trees. Mm. Or you can't see the trees for the forest. I feel like or whatever I was misunderstood as if I was looking for like trying to craft one. I'm just saying like that's how the Bucks are looked at. Yeah, no, I, we're saying the same thing. I'm just saying like it that people like are it. focused on the, the narrative too much, or right. like trying to figure out what the narrative is. I'm gonna let you have that one because I'm lost. <laughs> you get tomorrow. Sorry, uh, I might not. I might. But you I won't might be partying anymore. I still might not. <laughs> Let's get into the top five. <laughs> you might be partying because I'm not even really at the party right now. Like I'm, I'm. She turned the music down a while ago. Yeah, like it's. <laughs> <laughs> I left the party some time ago. It's residual party. Top five. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Tech top five. five. Um, last week we did the top hills of Monday Night Wars. I think it was a tie between me and Eric. Last that I saw, it was two two. Last time I checked, the camera be mad again. <laughs> two two. We need y'all. We need y'all voting. He he didn't tag people either, so it's kind of on him. He, he normally said, oh he, he did he, was he did he said he's going to yeah yeah lean love and you learn this week Ken this week <laughs> though we're gonna do the top like second third fourth whatever generation athletes so somebody from a family of athletes the top offspring of at- of professional athletes <laughs> that sounds weird but that's what we're doing pause <laughs> <laughs> Tim <Tell. All> right <clears throat> so number five five I'm going with Steph mm. um number four. I'm going with Barry. Barry Bonds. Okay, thank you. I was like, okay. Sorry. All right. Barry Bonds. I got you with Barry. Steph Curry. Barry um, Bonds, I got you. So I was telling Camille earlier with my text at five is is well deserved, but number three would throw people off, and that's Bruce Matthews. Okay. So but Bruce is like yeah. a legend, legend. Yeah. Um number two, I put Kobe. And number one, I got If you smell I was close. But the rock is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Dwang. Eric. I was trying to find a way to force the rock on this list and I couldn't do it. So he's my mm, six. Really? Five is Steph. Four, Ken Griffey Jr. Three, Peyton Manning. Two, Kobe. One, Barry Bonds. Mm. I got uh, Peyton Manning at five. Steph Curry at four. Ken Griffey Jr. at three. Dwayne the Rock Johnson at two. The crossover appeal for the Rock is like he he's just done too much. Like, like I know it's his, his I know it's, I know it's crazy. sport, but it's like he leveraged his sport to more, yeah. and he still like plays. Like it's weird because his, he's still an athlete. His role is like yeah, I'm like athletic, but it's like you haven't. Done. I'm the Rock in movies now. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it's like he's just playing himself in the movie. It's weird. Number yeah, one, but his wrestling career was like six years. It was, and it was still very impactful. So I think that Crazy. actually gives him more credit that he was able to accomplish so much in six years and leverage that into what he is now. That yeah, but you can't two. really. Uh, well, it's y'all list. I don't care. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I look at it. Number one, I got Kobe Bryant because uh, people don't even know that Kobe dad was uh, an athlete, <laughs> and to. Uh, yeah. To to grow to be as big as Kobe was and to be one of the greatest to ever touch a ball in your sports pause. pause. Um yeah, I'm good at the Kobe. Uh I got Ken's list. I'm sure we have the same number one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No. Nah, uh five. I would be surprised if we didn't. <laughs> he cheated. Um but number five is Peyton Manning. Four he has the rock slash Barry Bonds. You yeah. cannot do that. Can and he also spelled Barry B E R R Y. Which one are we gonna pick for him? Which one are we gonna pick? Well, for considering him? I only spelled one correctly, I'm gonna go with the rock. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be he gonna like, on my ass. Did <laughs> he put like Barry Barry Bonds or just Barry? Oh, he did get Barry Bonds. I was say if you put Barry, we could put Brent at the end. I mean, Brent at the beginning. I hear you. One of the berries. Number three. Oh, 
Womp womp. Um, just, <laughs> number three, Steph Curry. Uh, two, Ken Griffey Jr. And number one, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bean. <laughs> the Rock slash Barry Bonds. You knew that wasn't going to fly. It's like you <laughs> left that for us to, to be like, no, nah, nigga, you can't do that. Oh, one thing I was thinking about. Kobe's so cold, like you don't even realize his first and middle names are foods. What's the middle name? Bean. That's his real middle name? Yeah. Definitely thought that was a nickname this whole time. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. The, that 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 man's name. Yes. It's Kobe, like the beef, and Bean like the bean. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> that and it's wild. completely normal. Like no one thinks Nobody that. said nothing no. about it. We just let him rock. I mean he's hey Kobe, you know what you gonna do? Yeah. That's the show this week. Wow. Kobe Bean. <laughs> oh, no my keep going. Okay. That's the show this week. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all come back next week. Uh if you want to follow me on social media, you can catch me. Wait a minute. <sighs> on Twitter the silent music. Right. right on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, Snapchat, PSN at Camille Monet. C A M I L L E M O N A E because Your mom is fancy. Thank you, Fake Ken. At Bucksburger on Twitter. That's all you get. Yeah, damn right. And it's your boy. It's your boy, K. Harris. No. <laughs> Is it K. Harris still? <laughs> Double <laughs> underscore? K. Harris 216 on Twitter. Uh, Everyday one underscore name. gentleman on Instagram. I'm going to get one name. I don't know, I don't know what his name is. Make it is. easy. I think it's... We ain't going to do that. You got a fan's <laughs> on the page. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's your boy T-I-M-K-I-N-Z The number three <laughs> A-K-A ass Catch him A-K-A Mr. Give it to me We'll see y'all next week What's your phrase this week? Hey y'all ain't Fans with only the bitty, 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 bitty and shit. Yeah fans only Hey <laughs> fuck with it that ain't a, That's a thing <laughs> That is a thing to do <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not You Peace <laughs> that's a, we'll, we'll Keep it simple Peace. This has been a presentation Of the Break Break Media, Break Media. Media.